Hey, it's Joe Lines, and I was um, working on the Facebook group, uh, Auto Hotkey Group, and someone said they, they wanted to be able to type a couple letters and have their email address shoved in, but they didn't want to have to hit the end character, any sort of a space or a tab or a return or anything like that. So I initially pointed out you know, the asterisk, um, this asterisk here, that's what that does. So it says, don't wait for an ending character. So if I put in my initials and then, uh, it's funny because, uh, there we go. Um, Studio doesn't like hot strings. Um, and it is one of the ways is, is I'll demonstrate in here why I don't like, um, why I changed my script. But um, anyway, so now I'm gonna save this, reload it, run it. Now when I type J, now watch what happens when I hit the G. Bam, it throws my email address in the right away. I don't have to um, enter any period, any space, anything like that. So um, I'm gonna say this. Yeah, this does do what he wanted, but um, someone in the forum had said, oh, I, I use this text menu tool that allows me to visually see the stuff. So um, he he has, a and I forget, he had two at signs, which I found interesting because then you got to hold down shift and hit another key. So I thought, hey, what are the odds I'm going to hit GG? So I'm going to hit GG and look, it brings up this menu, right? Which I think is pretty slick. I can either click it with my mouse or I could have left my hands on the keyboard and mouse over and hit it and dumped it in there for me, right? So... Um, he didn't share his function, so I decided to go take a look, and I, I found it, but the example I found on the forum was using um, the old loop over object, loop and A index, and, and it just seemed like, hey, this would be a little more efficient if we dumped it, if we took advantage of stir split, the stir split function, right? So um, in here, let's just walk through it step by step, right? This is where when you type GG, it's gonna call, it comes in here and says, hey, call this text menu function. Um, these are the parameters we're sending to it, right? Everything we do these quotes, and that's what this text options are. Um, it's kind of a weird word, um, yeah, whatever. Menu. I think I would say menu items is. No, I'm already using menu items here. Anyway, that's why I wrote menu items. Um, anyway, so that gets dumped into here, um, and notice it again here, right? So this is what this text is what gets brought into the stir split, um, and it's parsing it on this weird pipey character. And this isn't a normal pipe, right? And that's part of the point is uh, I had put in a pipe and the, the gentleman that we were corresponding with, he, he had said, yeah, you know, some people might have a pipe in their text, so he didn't want to use a pipe. And, and honestly, I agree with them. It's just, I personally never put a pipe in my text anyway, so I wasn't too concerned with it. But in this example, I switched it back to whatever character this is that he was using um, because it, uh, it just negates that issue because I don't even know what this character is. And uh, the good thing is, since this is actually in your function part of the code, um, then you're always going to have it handy, right? I can come in here and copy it and add a new one to this list. So um, I put this in a for loop. And what's great about that, again, is, is this, I'm acting on this thing here as an object, which parses it automatically for me. Um, for this for object, yeah, I don't have to store this as an object, right? Because it does it automatically. So I think that's really cool. So I can use a for list, uh, for loop to loop over it. The K here is the index, but I don't, I don't actually need the index. I do have to have it as a placeholder because I have to, I have to have my values, right? And that's what's going to get parsed. That's what each one of these texts. So this first time through this for loop, which is two lines, and that's why I don't have any, um, brackets um, around this is this is cool, right? It's going to grab that the first time it says that gets in here to add to my menu. This is cool. Gets shoved in with an action as the sub uh, subroutine type label to jump to, right? If you do something with it or, but I like, you know, that'll be the next time. And then to do more. So each time through, it's going to use those and, and build add to the menu. <laughs> And it finishes this for loop, however many you're in here, right? That's a really nice thing about it is you don't tell it how many there are. It just keeps doing the for loop goes. You don't have to use accounts or anything like that. Um, goes over them. And then you show it. Um, and the cool thing about menus is when, you, when you're when you here, it'll show it and wait for you to select something. After you click an item, it um, it... I think technically it'll jump into the action and do everything here and then come back up here and kill the menu after, right? Delete all, every item in my menu. Um, let, meanwhile, let's go down here. What I did initially was I was sending the keystrokes. Um, however, 
when you send keystrokes and who knows how long this text is going to be, it can get funky, right? If you have a lot of text. So I prefer to send paste, but I really don't like losing what's in my clipboard. So first I'm backing up my clipboard. And when you do back up clipboard all, so that way, if you just did clipboard, it would just be the plain text, right? We want clipboard all that way. If it's a file on your clipboard or image, whatever it, it keeps it. Um, so we back it up and then I take the, a, this menu item that it's the, um, built-in variable from this menu up here of what was selected and shove it in the clipboard. So that'll be the text that was selected. Um, I send a paste, just a plain using the send command and paste. Um, this is highly accurate and usually doesn't break. Um, you know, there are different three different send events and input and, and just the send command. Um, but I'm sending a paste. Now this is important. Uh, make sure any, when you want to restore your clipboard, um, add a little bit of a sleep after you, before you do that. So send the paste, tell it to sleep a bit and then restore your clipboard. If you don't, it'll actually end up storing the, um, it shoves what was here into your clipboard. It, it kind of goes out of order. It'll jump into this before. It, oh, sorry. It'll, it'll send what was originally in your clipboard as the paste. Um, and it's really confusing because even though you saw here that you, what you wanted, it, it does this before it ends up sending the paste if this sleep wasn't here on line 20. So just make sure you have a sleep there. Uh, but yeah, this is really cool. I, I, I like a lot. The other thing I wanted to point out was, um, here I'm doing, you know, it, it's great if you have a lot of hot strings and you can't remember them. So I can type GG, here it is. But let's say I had a whole nother group. What's really cool about this is I can copy these two lines. I don't think I need a return here, but I'll throw one in just in case. And let's say I did FF and here, oops, should not have got rid of that second. Oh yeah, well, that's fine. So um, now when I relaunch this, look, if I hit GG, this one comes up, but if I hit FF, this one comes up, right? And this is the beauty of having things in a function, right? I'm passing these as parameters. I don't have to repeat all of any of this stuff, right? I could just easily add a few more of these um, and not have to worry about it. Oh, actually, you know what? I think I... I do need the return there. Otherwise it would have done both of those. Yeah, that'd be bad. Um, so anyway, uh, I think this is a great easy solution for those people who have too many hot strings to remember. Um, they can easily go to it. The other one I wanted to point out here is in this first one, I had this new line. So if we do a GG, notice the, but that's about it. It's a look, looks a little funky cause there's no break there, but when I select it, it does shove in that new line character. So if you're trying to do line breaks, right? Um, they may not visually display fine. Oh, I have to go down here, get rid of this. Relaunch it, GG, that's about it. And now look, there's two line breaks there, right? Um, or new lines, I should say, technically. But anyway, you get the idea. I hope that helps. Um, I think it's pretty cool for people who have a lot of hot strings, want them to have them handy, um, especially with that you can dictate which what your keys are. Um, makes it very easy to have them without doing any crazy uh, keystrokes. Cheers.